Welcome to The Daily Stand-Up. I'm Mel Delgado, developer advocate at Cisco. And I'm Denise Kwan, developer advocate at Cisco. All right, today, uh, by the way, welcome back to another episode of The Daily Stand-Up. Today's episode, we want to talk about agile development. Now, agile development is part of the DevOps culture. It's been around, it actually predates dev, things like DevOps. It's been around for uh, quite a while, well over a decade. Um, and I think some of the things we want to talk about today are are the the good, the bad, the ugly. So Denise, I wanted to start with you. The good, the bad, the ugly. If there is bad and ugly to talk about, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to force that on you. Maybe it's just all <laughs> rainbows and unicorns. I don't know. Um, what, what did you like about uh, at adopting Agile? And also, what were some things that maybe you, you, you could you could care less about or deal, you know, like you, the things that you basically had to deal with that maybe it was not as smooth as you might have thought. I started with Agile, I think it's in like 2010, 2011. And this is like way before it was super popular. Now, if you go to most companies, everybody's doing Agile, at, at least it seems like it. Um, and so we were kind of the an early adopter to Agile. So we had to take this class of like, what is Agile? How do you do story points and all of that? And I think from a dev perspective, initially everybody's like, oh, this is great. Especially since we're, I mean, I guess the managers weren't so happy because they always told us the managers were like the chicken in the whole situation. So they couldn't actually say or dictate what we had to do and from a dev perspective we love that because denise you know, i gotta stop you right there <laughs> chicken <laughs> yeah the, i took a class they legitimately said that the managers were chickens in the whole picture wow. of agile and they showed us this like whole diagram of how like devs are here and managers were on the outside because they said that they couldn't dictate how the devs were going to implement the story. So the story's the story and they couldn't tell us what to do and we had to make the decisions. And that was actually really hard for the managers. I, in, in my group, they actually fired multiple agile coaches because of it, because they didn't like the fact that the agile coach told the man, like them, stop doing this, stop doing this. And then one, they after a little while, it took them a little bit of time, but they finally accepted the fact that they couldn't dictate what was happening as long as we were following the whole creating the stories, doing the story points and everything. And so that's when things got better. And, you know, it definitely does take quite some time to transition over because it's a completely different mindset. And so, um, you know, I've been doing agile for a long time and I, you know, for every group, it's a little different because you have to adjust. There's no like, concrete you do it this way and that's it and that's how it works you have to figure out how long is your sprint your sprints because that's different depending on every single project i've been in the like some groups depending on which project you're working on your sprint sprint duration might be different so i think that that's a thing that you just kind of slowly have to learn and it's not one of those things night and day one day you're not doing agile the next day you are i think you know it's really learning there's definitely a lot of pros right because in Agile, you could release a lot more frequent. In back in the days with Waterfall, you would spend so much time going in and doing the whole process and then you release and then like customers are just sitting there waiting for features. So Agile, you can definitely release a lot faster, especially now with cloud being so um, dominant in, and being able to just put your release out and customers can get it right away. Another thing is like we had always done um, customer demos as part of the sprint. And so we can get direct feedback from the customers right away. And, you know, just don't spend a year developing something. And the customer's like, what were you thinking? Because that is just like we build products for customers. So if we are not listening to the customers. What's the point? Um, so those were definitely good things. The bad and the ugly. I mean, there definitely is a lot of the times it is difficult to get a feature in within a two week sprint. Sometimes it's just the, the feature is just so big and you know, people will probably thinking, we'll just break it up, right? Break it up into smaller stories. But there are sometimes stories that it's just too hard to do that. And um, just 
in the learning process, that is definitely difficult. It's not an easy thing, but at the end of the day, I personally think that there's a lot more benefits to Agile than there are the bad and the ugly, right? Like it's, it's you always have to weigh, weigh pros and cons. Um, there, I mean, off the top of my head, you know, another bad is like from a dev perspective, I was all like, wait, I have to do a lot of this testing. I have to now automate everything. Now I have to, you know, do all of this other stuff that I didn't expect to do before because it wasn't part of our charter. So I think everybody just had to take on things that they weren't normally doing because of Agile, right? The whole term being able to to do a lot of different things. But one thing it did teach me is to be agile, to be able to do front end stuff, back end stuff. Um, I did performance testing load and it gave me that, that opportunity to be like a full stack engineer and to do everything. So it, you struck on something that uh, you hit a nerve there for me, like, well, not a nerve, but it's, it's more of a question. Uh, do you feel that it's more of a mindset first before a tool set? Hmm, that's a good question. I think... I think it needs to be, right? Because if you're not ready for that change and you're not ready to do something different, then you're going to always push back. I think that's human nature. Like you have to be mentally ready or open to making these changes and realize that it's not gonna be the same as it was before. You're going to have to make changes. You're going to have to adopt to this new way and be able to try. Because like I said, it's not, you must do two week sprints. You must do this at this time. You must do this. Every product is going to be different. And I'm not going to even say every company. It's every product. Um, just within the same company, you might do something different. Yeah. So that it, it's almost like you, you have to be agile in mindset from that point onwards. Because like you were saying, yeah. like you, you get put onto a different project that project might have a different sprint duration. Um, your, you know, your velocity might be measured differently because your skill sets are different. In other words, it might take you four story points on the next project to complete something mm -hmm. because you don't really have a lot of experience with it versus like, ah, oh, well, you know, it might be one or two story points with something else because you are familiar with it and you just have to be agile. You have to be, your mindset has to be that way. You're like, okay, I'm ready for change. You know, whatever our yeah. sprint's gonna be, I'm ready for that change. Yeah, that's definitely how it has to be. And I think now people are more, at least I think people are more open to doing Agile just because it's so, it's, I think it has taken as like the top way of doing development. Um, when I had first done it so many years ago, it was still new. We were one of the first few groups who did it. And so it was difficult because there wasn't anything not too much to read about, not too much to see, not too much to like get the data that this is actually working. And I think that's why it took us some time to really fully figure it out for ourselves. And we did question, is this the right thing to do? Um, but we wanted to be a forward project. Like we wanted to try the new things. We went and started using Git very early. And then we did a lot of these things that weren't, the industry standard at the time. And um, at the end of the day, I think it was a good decision that we did these things because we were able to create a product for the customers and to listen to them because I think, yeah, I, I probably mentioned in a previous episode that I did do developer support, developer success for a while, which I never thought I would do. But at the end, I think that that was a big learning experience that when you're a dev, you have a certain mindset that this is how the product should be and this is what they want. But until you actually talk to the customers, you're not gonna know. And so that's why those demos are very important because you realize that, hey, maybe what I was developing isn't what they want. Well, it's no secret that uh, operations is now taking that on, not just operations in general. I think that's where it all started. Uh, but it, now it starts going into... Uh, folks that are security practitioners, uh, financial operations like FinOps. And so you're seeing that 
that that term, if you will, of of something ops, right? Uh, be it fin ops or sec ops, right? You, you're seeing that 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 terminology being used where we're we're adopting, uh, and I say we just because I mean. I've, my whole career has been about operations. So uh, we, we've we adopted some of those practices. And so that way we can be agile as well because we know that developers are going to be agile. We might as well. And if we're working together on the same team, uh, we, in other words, we're, we all have the common goal of delivering product and making it operational and available uh, 24 by 7 if need be, if that's what the product calls for. So, so, so we had to adopt a, an agile mindset as well. So in doing so, I have a few of my, you know, good, bad, and uglies. Like good, I think it's almost all good. I I, I like that it's something from operations. The one thing we learn anyway is that it, it's always going to change. There's always going to be an upgrade of something. There's always going to be some new technology. Of there's going to be things that break at the at a moment's notice, and now you're in new territory about something you you know some break that you need to fix that that maybe you're not even familiar with. So you're going to learn something. And so there's a little bit of agility in there already sort of built into the system, so to speak. So for me, I think one of the good things is that, that it, it brings us all together in an agile way, meaning like we can incorporate things. Oh, okay. We're going to do a new release for something. Great. Let's work together and let's figure that out. Um, also organizing our work and organizing our thinking. So what I mean by that is like the things like daily standups, um, which by the way, that's one of the blessings and a curse, but something like, I'll come back to the curse part of it, but the, the blessing is that we all kind of get together and we, we all feel like we're just rowing the boat in the same direction. So, okay, today, here are the challenges. Here are some things I was working on yesterday, the things I'm working on today, and hopefully here's here some things that I hope to accomplish by tomorrow and so on and so forth. And we do that like, you know, every single day so that everyone's aware of something and also some people can add to, uh, you know what, I have some experience with that. I know you might be have some challenges, you know, let me volunteer to help you out. Or I would volunteer to help somebody else out uh, if I had the cycles or, or just, you know, point them to a, a, a knowledge base somewhere um, to, to get some help. So I think that was one of the big things that I liked. But at the same time, it was one of the things I didn't like so much because sometimes I felt like, nope, there's a, you know, we're like you were saying, those big story points, something that takes a while to implement or do. Mm -hmm. And we're in the middle of it. And so, yeah, I got nothing new to report, you know, and it just feels embarrassing <laughs> almost. So I'm glad we're having that conversation. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I don't really have something. I'm still working on the problem. So um, mm -hmm. either, like you said, we either have to decompose that story into, into, you know, subtasks or have some more finer granularity in it so that we at least have something we can feel like we accomplished by the end of a 24 hour period. Um, so that was one. So sometimes it's just like you just, or you could carry it, carry it over and then be embarrassed. Right, too. right, right. Yeah. Here's another carryover <laughs> and your velocity yeah. and your and velocity, velocity tanks at the end of the day. Down. Right. So yeah, exactly. So, and then, so in, in a lot of our features where it's not just a break thing, Oh, okay. I think I'm going to fix this. Cause that's, that's the other like pet peeve is maybe I'm in the middle of an urgent P1 and you're asking me to go to a daily standup. It just means like, okay, I know we got to yeah. do that, but I'm in the middle of in the middle of a firefight here. I, I, you know, it, it's just one of those, like, it just feels very unnatural to, but it makes sense to like get us together. It doesn't matter what's going on to report on what's going on. Now, a lot of our daily stands though were, were thankfully a lot about adding new features. So what, what is it I'm working on? What is it I'm developing? Um, and so do I, you know, am I marching towards that end of sprint demo? So those were the things that I, I think good, bad, and ugly. And there's, there's probably a lot more, but I, I think, uh, overall though, I, I, I wouldn't go back. I wouldn't go back to the way it was before I wouldn't with, either. with waterfall or disorganization or throwing tickets over the wall for us to go do something. I, I, I think you and I are in agreement that, that yeah. we've got it pretty good. So, so since devs do agile and ops do agile, do you think that there's any possibility that eventually they merge into one big, you know, one big team where, hey, we're both doing Agile. We both have the same thing, goal of, we want the product to be out there, to be the most stable, to to have all of that. You know, does it make sense for it to be one versus devs have their own Agile going on with their sprints and all of that, and then ops having it separately? You know, is it something that we can collaborate? Because, you know, we've the whole point of us talking is the fact that devs typically, hey, ops, Throw the ticket over. 
I need you to do this. It's almost like there's a wall, a yeah. barrier between the devs and the ops. Like, you know, there's a common ground right here of, hey, we both do this. We both have... <laughs> See, it's funny. I also say we, too, because I associate myself as a dev. Um, uh, and But is there something that can help with that, with everybody working together? We don't... Why do we need tickets? Should it... Should it be something and something different so that we can communicate and come to better grounds? Just like you said, we discuss things in daily stand-up and can say, hey, I have an idea for that. Or I have an idea for this. Um, You, you know what? Yes. I, 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 I see it if it hasn't already happened for some organizations. It's on the way. Um. But it's not going. It's that. But at the same time, I'm also. I also recognize that everyone has their discipline. Uh, I'm. I'm. For example, a lot of my time isn't going to go into developing uh, the application front end for the whatever our company's product is. My attention is going to be spent uh, in the infrastructure. For example, just because I'm more operations oriented. It doesn't mean that I, I don't use software to implement what I do. I treat I like to treat my infrastructure like a coding problem. So to some degree, yeah. So yes, but I, I, I the only caveat with that is to say that we each have our own disciplines, but being on the same team, even if it, you know, like they say in the, the, the two pizza teams, right? Like don't, don't make it bigger than that, right? Being part of that team somehow, some way, I think is, is if it hasn't happened already, it probably should. And there's so many different benefits from it. And I think uh, as we keep going with our shows and talking more with the audience, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna probably start peeling back that the layers of that onion and showing how the benefits of working together are gonna come in. And sometimes we're gonna butt heads. I'm just gonna say it. You know what I mean? Like we're we're probably gonna. I mean, we'll probably agree at the end of the day, but it's probably gonna be a little. There's probably gonna be some friction because we see things differently, and I think that's okay. And I think it's gonna be something that um, you know, it's it's. I, I'm ready to discuss. I'm open minded. I'm. I'm ready to learn and I'm, I'm hoping the audience is too. I think that, you know, talking about being open-minded and willing to learn, I think that agile really, adopting agile really puts your mindset, you know, going back to us saying mindset, puts your mindset in this way, like things are different. So let's try to do things for the better good. I, I know a lot of, at least in my opinion, a lot of the reasons why devs are like, Oh, I'm just going to open a ticket and ops does it. I think a lot of it is ego, right? Like I'm going to, I know this and they know this, but what's wrong with us knowing a lot of what each other does so that, yeah, you, it doesn't mean that somebody's going to replace someone else. It's just, if you have an understanding of how it is, then you'll, you have more sympathy and empathy, right? And when you do that, I think, Ultimately, we all have the same goals. So why are we fighting with each other? <laughs> you and I are fighting, I hope. <laughs> we get along. I, 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 but I don't know. I don't know. We do. <laughs> some, but... some, you know, you could argue that some, let's put it this way. They would probably be on different softball teams at a company party or a company outing or something, right? So... <laughs> Ah, uh, so what do you what do but you... Th um, th that's that's uh -huh. the industry, yeah, right? That's, yeah. that's what's known in the industry is like, oh... The ops folks does it. <laughs> oh, the dev is in charge. Why isn't the dev doing this? Why? Like, there's all of this, like, why don't we just talk to each yeah, other? Then yeah. we'll, we'll know. We don't have to speculate. Um, but, and with Agile, you just do. You do have the opportunity to talk to each other. Because in some ways, you're forced to talk to each other. And then you're going to realize that, hey, we're not that different. Right? Can't we all just get along? <laughs> <laughs> well, Denise, it's been uh, great with this other. Ep what are we episode four now? So this is this is wonderful. So, I think yeah, so. It's been a great, great, great discussion. Are you headed over to Cisco Live? I am. I am going to be going to Cisco Live Amsterdam, and that is February seventh to the tenth. Um, so we're gonna go fly over the pond and and see the folks over there. But there are two sessions that. I wanted to just highlight one is from Ray Stevenson. It is called Living Life on the Edge from Developers to Ops. And it's just showing the different tools that we are creating to enable developers on how to get more automated, like APIs and everything that you and I are all about. 
And then there's going to be an inclusive in tech panel that I myself am going to be on. We're going to just talk about how being a female in tech, how that's different, how to be inclusive, um, also the movement of using more inclusive language and just talking about those kinds of things because, you know, that's that's what we've been moving towards, being inclusive, diversity, and whatnot. So um, I know you are going to be there as well. So check both of us out if you are going to Cisco Live Amsterdam. Yeah, I've got a couple sessions too, and I, I, I'm excited to be present. I don't, I don't have all the details just yet. Um, but hopefully in the next episode, we'll be able to cover some of those. I am super excited about it. And like you, I'm going to be flying over the pond and going through that really long flight, but I think it's going to be completely worth it. <laughs> and I am super excited about it. Yeah, super excited to see everybody. Um, you know, we did have, you know, back in, was it June? We went to Cisco, Cisco Live US. So now excited to see our folks in the European region and always, if you see Mel and I and you have an idea for a topic that you want us to talk about, let us know. Or if you are not going to go live Amsterdam and have a topic for us to talk about, let us know in the comment section because we want to we want to talk about topics that people are interested in, not just ones that me and Mel like to talk about. Because we could talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> We're good at that. We're good at that. All yeah. right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in this episode. We will catch you in the next one. Again, uh, thank you for watching. We are the daily. This was it actually not we. We are. We are part of. But this <laughs> is the daily stand-up. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>